Hello, I'm Chris Searle. The programme you're about to watch is called People and Places. You'll see scenes of everyday life in Britain. You'll find out how the British like to relax and how they go about their work. Above all, you'll get the chance to improve your understanding of native speakers. You'll hear them using natural language in a variety of accents. Don't worry if you don't catch every word. Try to understand the main points of what people are saying, the overall meaning of what they're saying. During the series, we meet ten very different people in ten very different places. The Outer Hebrides is a group of islands off the northwest coast of Scotland. Windswept and all but treeless, the ruggedness of its coastline is a clear indication of how these islands are constantly buffeted by the North Atlantic Ocean. The largest island is Lewis and Harris, with its population of about 24,000 people. Nearly all the people here speak two languages, English and Gaelic, which is a Celtic language similar to Welsh and Irish. The occupations of most of the people here involve fishing, farming and weaving. The world famous Harris Tweed is made here and much of that is still made in people's homes. The main fishing port and the ferry terminal and the point of departure for all that tweed are all here in the main town, Stornoway, with its population of about 6,000 people. And among them is the person we're going to meet today, a doctor, John Smith. John and Muriel, Mrs. Smith, relaxing at home. Um, where are you both from? From Lewis. Both from here? Both from here, yes. Have you known each other since you were children? No. No. It's very interesting. We actually met in Inverness, although we're both from the island. I was a medical student at Aberdeen University. I, I met John while I was training to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived here together in Lewis? Mm, ten years. Ooh, more, than it, that, more than that, more than that, more than that. Since 1975. John, you're a doctor, but what does your work involve? What sort of doctor are you? I'm actually a general practitioner, a GP, as uh, we're referred to in this country, uh, or, if you like, a primary health care provider. In other words, when somebody feels, any of my patients feels ill, they come to me in the first instance, and I have a look at them and try and decide what's wrong with them. If it's something that I can treat myself. I do so uh, either by advising them on what to do or giving them a prescription to take to the chemist to get medication, tablets or medicine. Or if it's something that requires more specialized care, I refer them on to one of my specialist colleagues in the hospital service. How many patients have you got? Well, I'm actually in a group practice of three. There are three of us and we have uh, about 3,700 patients. Are they most of them National Health Service patients? They are all exclusively National Health Service patients. We don't do any private uh, medicine in, in this part of the country. In principle, you could treat your patients privately. Yes, in theory I could treat my patients privately. I would prefer not to, actually, because I don't think that private medicine should be mixed up with the National Health Service. I think that can lead to uh, difficult conflicts of interest. Do you work from here at home or do you have a, a surgery somewhere? No, I work from the health centre in Stornoway. That's my main base. And that's where all your patients come? That's where all my patients come, the ones that want to see me in the consulting room. Good 
Hello, health centre. Yes, Dr. John. Did you give that to John when he comes out? Mm -hmm. From the treatment room. Right. Who's next? Mr. Woodcock. Yes, he's to come to you for an ECG at 10 o'clock and he's to see Dr. Lawson again at half past 10. Uh, well, or just when you finish the ECG. OK? OK, thank you. Hello, Health Centre. Hello, Good morning. I've got an appointment with Dr. Smith for okay, 10 past 10. Right. Right, would you like to take a seat? Okay. I will call you, please. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. That's the only one that's left tomorrow afternoon. You want this one? What's your name? Miss Smith, the doctor will see you now. Room five. Very good. Bye bye. Morning, Miss Smith. Nice Morning. to see you again. Thank you. What can uh, we do for you today? Well, I thought I'd come up for a checkup. Just. Hmm. I'm feeling a little bit better. Mm -hmm. How are the legs? Uh, not too good. I could do with a new pair. Hello, oh, good morning. I've got an appointment with Dr. Lawson. Dr. Lawson, 10 past 10. That's right. Fine, take a seat. Thank, Thank you very much. Yes. It's a better day today. It is. Yes, and there's great need of it. Yes, after all the rain. Yes. Then 20 past 4 tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Bye, just now. Bye. Um, could I make an appointment for Miss Dr. Smith, please? Yes. Now, when did you want the appointment? Tomorrow, please. Tomorrow. Right. Could you come in the morning? Yes. 20 past 10? Yes. Is that suitable? Right. What's your name? Erica MacDonald. And your address? 15 Port Okay, that's fine. 20 past 10 tomorrow. Thank okay. you. Are you needing any of your tablets? Yes, I require Fusanide, please. I think that's all I require at the moment. I'm still having a lot of bother with my bad circulation. <clears throat> yes. I'm afraid there's nothing much that can be done about that. It's part of the process of ageing. That's not so good. As a group of three doctors, obviously you work as individuals, but do you talk to each other as well? Yes, we do. We have a regular meeting every morning after our morning surgery at 11 o'clock where we discuss the business of the day and exchange information and share out our home visits, which we have to do on a geographical basis because of the nature of the practice. So who's paying for that then, John? The social work department. But of course, that's only a fixed amount of money, so it's going to run out in, in a couple of weeks' yeah, time. See, I mean, the way it was when I left it was that there were... Excuse me, carry on. Hello? Right. Okay. Hello. Good morning. What sort of differences are there between your experience here and the sort of work you might be doing on the mainland or in a town? The work is vaguely similar, really, to the work that's done uh, by GPs in towns or even in cities in terms of the problems that you meet. Uh, uh, the main areas of difference are really because of the isolation, because of the geographical location, uh, that sometimes we have to evacuate people to the mainland uh, for specialist care. You live on an island, you must sometimes feel a bit cut off from the rest of the world. Yes, you do sometimes. We have quite good communications. Uh, there are planes every day, there's a ferry service twice a day, except Sundays. The island still has certain traditions and philosophies, and one of them is a fairly strict observance of Sunday as a day of rest, so ferries and planes don't run on Sunday. Is that because religion is very strong here? Religion is quite strong here, and if you live in a community, you have to respect uh, the beliefs and faiths of the people. Does living on an island also mean that the things you buy have to come from the mainland? Oh yes, all goods have to be brought by the ferry.
Tell me about the economy of the island. What do most people do for a living? The economy of the island, traditionally, historically, has been basically the fishing industry and the Harris Tweed industry. And fishing is still big business? Fishing is still big business, although it has changed considerably. Many years ago, it used to be the herring fishing, then white fish, but now it's more shellfish, prawns and crabs in particular, that are the most sought after. What about illnesses at sea? Have you got any means of rescuing people if they're taken ill or injured at sea? Within the past year, an air rescue helicopter has been established in Stornoway, and that has made a tremendous difference for evacuating sick or injured fishermen or seamen fr from boats, or in fact for people who get into difficulty uh, around the coast. The first person to go down is a member of the crew, the winchman, and he will find out what kind of emergency is involved. When the doctor has gone down and made his diagnosis, it is the winchman who will, if necessary, bring the patient up into the helicopter for transfer to hospital. There are two of my colleagues in the island, one of them being one of my partners, who in fact go out regularly with the helicopter, and they have undergone special training to be lowered onto the decks of boats heaving in 60-foot waves in the Atlantic Ocean. get involved in these emergencies as well. Sometimes when my partner Ian Lawson has done the hay raising bid, I might have to anaesthetise the patient brought in by the helicopter rescue service at the hospital. Okay, I'll just have a, a look at Mr Wood. Mr. Wood, if you put your hand by your side, we'll take another little look at your tummy. Just lay a hand. Oh, yes, you're very tender there. It certainly appears to be acute appendicitis. I'll go and scrub, John. Okay. Right, James. Is this your first operation? Yes. You've never been in hospital before? No. Have you had any serious illnesses in the past? 
No. You're quite healthy normally. Yes. Okay, we'll start putting you to sleep then. What happens is that I just attach this syringe to the drip. The drip's already in your vein, so you won't feel any pain at all. And I squeeze and you go off to sleep very quickly. You get a funny taste in your mouth as you're going off to sleep. What's it like, Anina? Something like the onions. There we are. I think it's away, actually. Do you have to travel long distances to see your patients? Our practice is quite scattered. It goes 15 miles in one direction and 15 miles in another direction. And I do about 22,000 miles a year motoring. Really? As much as that? That must be 35,000 kilometers. It is quite a scattered population. people still speak Gaelic? Yes, I do approximately 75% of my work in Gaelic. 75% as much as that? About 75% because we deal mostly with the older population and they almost all still speak Gaelic. Are there still some people who can't speak English at all? Yes, there are one or two of the very elderly who cannot converse fluently in English and are much more comfortable in Gaelic. Good morning, Dr. Smith. Good morning, Mrs. McCree. How is your mother? Well, her leg is so a wee bit painful today. Can you just come inside and see her, please? Thank you. Mrs. McLeod, have you seen her face? Yes, it's good. Ah, it's good. Good. Have you seen her face? Yes. Ah, I've seen her face. Have you seen her face? Ha gosh, that's so enough. And it gosh has. She glun ya show a gosh. Ah, she is getting. Three and a half. Steam and a hammer. Go wake him, his maker at all has. She ha, and you'll go against that. That the hour she got party. I don't mind listening to the backpipes in the distance, but within four walls, it's not terribly pleasant. You have to be a bit of a diplomat. Hmm, by and large, yes. Muriel, what about you personally? Do you have any activities of your own? Well, some evenings I take boy scouts. I'm a couple of scout mistress, and uh, I'm also involved in with amateur dramatics. Are you? Is that, uh, is that very active here? It is quite active and it's fun. Tom, what is it? The lifeboat's gone down. No. No, 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 it's not what I'm looking for now. Uh, remember, when you come in, Tom, you've come in from the gale, so your hair's going to be all over the place. Yep. And when you come in, I want you to break the line into two parts. The lifeboat and then puff, puff, and then the lifeboat's gone down. All right? Okay. okay. Kitty Bell, that's fine from you. Remember to quick to the door. Yes. Right, Tom. Ready when you are. Let's go. Tom, what is it? The lifeboat. The lifeboat's gone down. That's no. excellent. That's excellent. Exactly what I want from the children. That's spot on. Couldn't be better. Tell me about your family. How many children have you got? I have two. A boy of eight and a girl of 13. What are their names? Katie and Alistair. Do they behave themselves? Katie tends to, but Alistair is difficult. He's a typical boy.
When you have time together, what kinds of things do you do as a family? Well, in our spare time, weather permitting, we spend a lot of time outdoors, fishing, walking the hills, picnicking, and sailing. Do you have your own boat? Yes. So all four of you go out on that from time to time? Yes, but only for short spells, maybe one night at sea. That's long enough for me. Do you enjoy it? I don't. You don't? I don't. <laughs> but you still go? I still go. Why? Well, I don't want to be left at home alone, so I suffer it. It'd be nice if it was always like this. Oh, really? Yeah. It's quite warm when you're working the seals. Living on an island, what sort of things do the children have to do? Katie, she's in guides, and she's learning Bali. Alistair's in the cub, the younger moment. Bye! Thanks for the lift! Bye! What is this like? as a place to live? Well, it's, it's good. I don't know, because I've never lived anywhere else. So it's really. quite exciting. Sometimes. <laughs> you don't feel you're missing anything by not being on the mainland? No, I no. feel people on the mainland are missing a lot. <laughs> what are they missing? Well, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, you know, there's the sea, and there's uh, the beaches, and there's the hills, and there's things like that. Do you like this island, then? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice place to live. Yeah, it's, 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 I wouldn't like to live in the city. If I would, I but she'd like to live in London. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, I would not. <laughs> to me, you would. Alistair can be difficult sometimes. I should be surprised if they stayed here. For university education, they're going to have to leave home. And perhaps they'll return. I, I would certainly prefer them to see part of the world, as much of the world as they can. And then, maybe come back and settle on the island. I do like the island. I mean, my roots are here. I understand the culture, the traditions, the beliefs. I like the amenities available, the uh, hills to walk on, the, the, sea, the sea to sail on, and the lochs to fish. 